Hey, I'm Courtney Waterman, your tutor. Lover of anime, manga, and math. And you just tuned into another session of Tutor Me Senpai. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're jumping into a fourth grade topic, naming your angles. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'll be putting time codes in for this video in the description box below. So use it to skip ahead to whatever part of the video you think is most interesting. As always, if you have any questions about what we see today, or even your own homework, you can always visit my Facebook page, at Tumi Senpai, and tell me all about it there. Today's video is going to have three parts, so leave a like, smash the subscribe button, and let's get started! So today we're going to be talking about four different ways of naming our angles. Now you may not have to use all of these, but there may come a time when more than one of these will be showing up as you're dealing with angles. So we're going to talk about them all today. Now how we name our angles is really going to be dependent on how the angle looks, how the angle is presented to us. Now the first two ways of naming our angles that I'm covering today are actually related. So we're going to talk about them at the same time. And to get started, our angle has to look like this. It can be acute, it could be an obtuse angle, it doesn't really matter, but it's going to have this type of setup. So notice we have our two rays connected our vertex and we're going to have three points which we're going to just name A, B, and C to make things simple. When we have our angle looking like this, we have a very easy way of naming this particular angle. And that's going to be, you're going to draw a small angle like this, a small angle like this, and it's going to say A, B, C. A, B, C. This is how you would name this angle. This is one way you can name this particular angle. Now why do we do it this way? Well, order matters when you're putting letters here. So we can't just say any combination of A, B, and C. We did that because we're traveling from one point on one ray to the other point on the other ray. So as long as you have three points, you can name your angle in this fashion. You have one point and you're traveling this way, going toward your vertex, and then you're going to be going away from your vertex to the other point, A, B, C, which means that we can probably do this the other way as well. Remember, there's two ways that are kind of related to each other. So if we can go down to B and over to C, we could technically go over to B and up to A. We're still traveling from one point on the ray to the other point going through the vertex. So we can say C, B, A, which just tells us to go this way, up that way. These are gonna be your two ways that you can name them when you have three points. But like I said, you can't just use any combination of these letters. This is not a proper way of naming this angle. You can't have angle BAC or angle BCA. Your vertex can never be your first letter. Likewise, you can't have ACB or angle CAB. Your B, your vertex, can't be the last letter in your angle name. All of these are wrong. You can't do that. You have to travel from one point to the other going through your vertex. Your vertex is always going to be the middle point. That also means that if you have more than three points, let's say you got a point here and a point here, and let's say this was D and this was E, you can't have A, D, B because you're not going from one ray to the next. You have to go from one ray to the next passing through the vertex. This is going to be how you're doing that when you have A, B, and C. Now there are other ways you can potentially name this one, but we're going to cover them in the next few sections. But when you have three points or more, this is one way or two ways you can name your angle. Let's jump into our next way of naming our angles when we don't necessarily have three different points to work with. Now let's say we have an angle that looks like this. Now, once again, it doesn't have to be acute, it could be obtuse, but it could be anything else. It doesn't matter what the type is. All you notice here is that we don't have three points. So how do we name it without our three points? Well, when you're only given a vertex like this, there is a way that we can still name this angle. And that's gonna be using the vertex letter. So we still draw our little angle here and we just put the vertex letter there. So it's just angle Q. This is gonna be known as angle Q. When you just have a vertex point and nothing else, 
you can still name that angle by saying angle Q. If this was some other type of letter here, let's say M, that'd be angle M. And once again, like I said, it doesn't matter if it's an acute or obtuse. If this was, let's say Z, this would be angle Z. If you're only given the one point and it's your vertex, you can name your angle that vertex. If you're only given one point and it's not the vertex, you can't do this. It has to be the vertex. But there's another restriction because this is not going to work all the time. Let's say you have something like this. And this was, let's say it was N. You can't technically say angle N for this one or that one. Because what does angle N actually represent? Both of these could technically be angle N. If you're just looking at this, well, that could be angle N. If you're just looking at this, that could be angle N. There's no way of knowing what angle N actually is. So we can't use this naming convention when you have an adjacent angle next to your other angle. You're gonna need something else in order for us to determine which angle is which. This is not enough information to go off of. So as long as you don't have something like this and you just have your, your angle all by itself here without having to worry about sharing this with someone else, you can use our naming convention of using your vertex. Angle N is this angle. If you have it by itself, angle P is that angle. Standalone angles works just fine. When we start connecting them to other angles, now, not so much. So we've covered three ways of naming our angles. When you have three points or more, you can name them two different ways from those three points. If you're having just the one point and it's your vertex, well, you can name it the vertex. But what happens if you don't have even the vertex? Well, let's jump into our next part and talk about what we can do there. So this is going to be the fourth and last way we're going to be able to name our angles. Now, this is not a right angle. I did not make a right angle on purpose. That's just going to be 90 degrees. But you can do this for a right angle as well. But I just want you to know that this is just going to be an angle where we have some letter or number for the outside of our angle like this. Notice it's not here. It's not our vertex necessarily. It's not some random point here, but we have some label for this angle. Well, we can technically use that label to name our angle. We can say that that's going to be angle X. Now, this once again could be a number. It could be a letter. It could be anything like that. So if this was, let's say, four, you can say that this was angle four. It's some sort of label for your angle. Now, how would this come into practice? Well, let's say you have a question with multiple angles and they're trying to get you to look at how they all look and do some type of comparison. They may say angle four plus angle two. That means you're going to be adding these two angles or let's say angle one plus angle two plus angle four. You're going to be adding all of these angles, but these are not necessarily the angle measurements. They're not the vertex. They're just some labels that are attached to these particular angles. So you can technically name those angles using their labels. And just to reiterate, it doesn't have to be just numbers here. You can have letters as well, A, B, and C. Typically lowercase, you keep your uppercase for your vertex and your angles will have a lowercase, but you can do the same thing. And it'll be like this, angle A, angle C, or let's say angle A plus angle B plus angle C, perfectly fine. When you have your angles labeled in this fashion, you can use the labels to name your angles. So I hope you were able to follow along with today's video and I hope you now understand the four different ways you can name your angles. However, if you have any questions about what you saw today or even your own homework, you can always visit me on the Facebook page at Timmy Senpai and tell me all about it there. If you hadn't done so already, remember to leave that like. It surely helps the channel by letting YouTube know that you found a video helpful. And if you found a video helpful, so can someone else. So leave a like, hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share this video with a friend. Well, that's all the time I have for today. I'm really hoping it's helped with your homework. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. 
I'm Courtney, and this has been another session of Tutor Me Senpai.